This lesson will be a review lesson on estimating fractions, comparing fractions, and adding and subtracting fractions. So beginning with estimating, we need to estimate by rounding each number to the nearest whole or half number. So example one, we have five and four six plus three and seven eighths. So what we need to do is with each of these numbers is we need to figure out is it closer to a whole number or to the half of the number. So this five and four six, for example, we're trying to determine is it closer to five, five and a half, or to six. Well, this is pretty close to five and a half because um, three over six is one half exactly. Four over six is pretty close to that. Uh, so it's closer to five and one half. And then three and seven eighths. Seven eighths is closer to the whole number. So we have to determine is this closer to three, three and a half, or four. This is closer to four because the seven eighths is a pretty large fraction. So it's closer to four. So you can approximate, that's your approximate symbol, and when you add five and a half plus four, you get a, your answer as approximately nine and one half. Example two, we have six and two ninths minus three and eight over 15. So again, you wanna think through and determine for six and two ninths is that number closer to six, six and a half, or to seven? Well, this would be closer to six, all right, because half of nine is 4.5. The two is closer to zero than a 4.5, so that this number is closer to six. And then three and eight fifteenths, eight fifteenths is almost half, right, because half of 15 is 7.5, this is eight over 15. So this is pretty close to three and one half. So when you subtract, uh, we can do six minus three, that would give us three minus another half. So three minus half would be two and a half. So our rounded answer would be two and one half. So that is a review of estimating. Next we're gonna work with comparing fractions. So example three, we have five over seven and then five over 11. Now remember, there's different ways we can compare fractions, and the main ways are as follows. One, we could rewrite with a common denominator. So rename with a common denominator. All right, that's one method. Another method is to convert. So convert to decimals. And then the third approach would be the cross multiplying approach. So that is if you cannot do this in your head. So I guess the fourth way would be just using a number sense. So if you want an actual process though, you can use one of these three. Number four, you can just use your understanding of fractions to determine. Um, so this one, personally, I'd find that either number two or three would be the simplest. Um, so if we convert to a decimal, what we do is you do five divided by seven. So if you use your calculator and we do five divided by seven, that's gonna give us 0.714. So if you round, it's gonna be 0.714. Whereas five over 11, if you do five divided by 11, you're gonna get 0.4545. That's gonna keep repeating. All right, so you can do it this way. And we can see that 0.714 is greater. So therefore, 5 sevenths is greater than 5 over 11. If you do the cross multiplying approach, you'd have to do 5 times 11 to get 55, and then multiply across 5 times 7 to get 35. Then you compare those numbers. And 55 is greater than 35, so therefore, 5 sevenths is greater than 5 over 11. Okay, if you chose the first method, so this is method 2, this is method 3. If you chose the first method, which is probably the most difficult, you have to rewrite with a common denominator. So you have to find the least common denominator of 7 and 11. And in this case, um, 
if you just do 11 times 7, that's going to give you that denominator. And I guess you don't need the lowest common denominator, but you need a common denominator. So if you're just trying to find a common denominator, you could just do multiply them together. And so we can rewrite as something over 77. So the first fraction, we do 7 times 11 on the bottom. So we do 5 times 11 on the top to get 55. The second fraction, we can do 11 times 7 on the bottom. Do 5 times 7 on the top. And that gives us 35 on the top. So if we use method 1, using method 1, it's probably the more difficult of the methods, we would have 55 over 77 and 35 over 77. And 55 is greater than 35, so therefore the first fraction is bigger than the second fraction. So that's using method 1, and then if we just use number sense, this could also work. Um, you have to understand how fractions work. Different ways you can think through this. One way is realize that uh, 5 elevenths is smaller than 1 half, right? Because half of 11 is 5.5, .5, so it's smaller than 1 half. Whereas 5 sevenths is bigger than 1 half because, um, because half of 7 is 3.5 and 5 is bigger than that. So uh, we can realize that 5 sevenths is bigger than 1 half, 5 elevenths is smaller than 1 half, so therefore 5 sevenths is greater than 5 over 11. Or as well using number sense, you can realize that if you split an object into sevenths, or into seven pieces, as opposed to 11 pieces. If you split into seven pieces, those pieces will be bigger than if you split into 11 pieces. So realizing that the sevenths are bigger pieces, we have the same number of them, right? We have five sevenths, we have five elevenths, and sevenths are bigger than elevenths. We can conclude that five sevenths is bigger or greater than five over 11. So any of these methods would work, and at this point you can choose whichever method is easiest for you. So here is one more example where you now have mixed numbers. And I'd like you to try to determine which method would be easiest for you to use and you try to determine the correct solution. So would it be a less than, a greater than, an equal to sign? So when you're comparing mixed numbers you can ignore um, you can ignore the whole numbers, like if they're the same, so they're both two in the front, so you can ignore that for now, and just look at the fractions, two over 13 and one over six. All right, so if you do it this way, you're comparing just those two fractions. So again, different ways we can do this. Um, if it were me, uh, I think the easiest way is probably the cross multiplying approach, is we can just quickly do two times six, to get 12, 1 times 13 is 13, 12 is less than 13, so therefore the first fraction is less than the second fraction. So 2 and 2 thirteenths is less than 2 and 1 6. So again, you can use any method you choose as long as you have the correct solution, which in this case would be a less than symbol. Okay, next we're going to work on reviewing with addition or subtraction. All right, so starting with the basic, where here you have the same denominator. If it's got the same denominator, you can just add right away um, because that's what we need to add fractions. So here we have mixed numbers, though. So we can add the whole numbers together, 2 plus 5, which gives us 7. And then adding the fractions, we have 3 fifths plus 4 fifths, which give us 7 fifths. So what we have is 7 and 7 fifths. But remember this this fraction 7 over 5, if it's an improper fraction you want to convert to a mixed number. So remember we can divide 7 by 5 that would give us 1 with a remainder of 2. So we can rewrite that as 1 and 2 over 5. So what we have is the 7 plus 7 fifths which is 1 and 2 fifths. Add those together 7 plus 1 is 8 so we have 8 and 2 over 5 as our solution. Here is another example. We have 12 and 1 tenth minus 4 and 2 fifths. So what we want to do here is um, we notice that there's not a common denominator, which means we need to 
write it with a common denominator. So to do that, notice that we can convert the two fifths to be something over 10, just like the first fraction, very quickly. Because 5 times 2 is 10 on the bottom, and then we just do the same thing on the top, 2 times 2 to get 4. So the 4 and 2 fifths, you can rewrite as 4 and 4 tenths. All right, now remember, when you're subtracting, we want to subtract the whole numbers together and then subtract the fractions together. But notice here that the fraction component, uh, we have 1 tenth, which is smaller than 4 tenths. So what that means is we need to borrow from the 12, that becomes an 11, and the one we borrow, we rewrite as something, uh, it's gonna be 10 over 10, right? To make sure it's got the same denominator as we have here in the problem. And then we put that with the one over 10 that we already had, which would give us 11 over 10. So we have 11 and 11 tenths minus the four and four tenths. Now we can subtract, 11 minus four is seven, 11 tenths minus 4 tenths is 7 tenths. So our solution is 7 and 7 tenths. I have three more examples for you. So this next one is again with adding or subtracting. And here we're subtracting a whole number by a mixed number. Now same idea as with the last problem where we don't have a fraction for the, from the first number to subtract with the two nines from the second number. So what I need to do is I need to borrow from the eight, make that a seven, and the one we borrow, you can rewrite as nine over nine. So now we have seven nine nines minus three and two nines. And now we can subtract because nine over nine minus two over nine would give seven over nine. So those can subtract now. And then seven minus three is four. So our solution is four and seven ninths. Example eight, here we don't have a common denominator. And the one, the eight cannot be, you cannot make it into a 12 by multiplying. So what I need to do is we need to find a least common denominator. So looking at the eight and the 12, we need to find the least common multiple of eight and 12. Multiples of 12 are 12, 24, 36, etc. Multiples of 8 are 8, 16, 24, etc. And notice that they both have a 24 in common. So what I can do is I can rewrite the 3 over 8 as something over 24 and the 5 twelfths as something over 24. So the 3 eighths, we can do 8 times 3 to get 24 on the bottom. On the top, we multiply by 3 as well to get 9. So five and three eighths is the same thing as five and nine over 24. And then five twelfths, we can do 12 times two to get 24. Then five times two would give us 10. So the two and five twelfths can be rewritten as two and 10 over 24. All right, so now from here, we can add together the whole numbers, five plus two, which would give us seven then the fraction, 9 24s plus 10 24s. 9 plus 10 is 19, so we have 19 24s. So our solution is 7 and 19 over 24. Now, one last example. Here, we are now going to be adding or subtracting three different numbers. All right, so this is a little bit different because we have three numbers, but it's the same process where to add or subtract, we need to find a least common denominator. Now here we need to find something that goes with three, six, and four. So thinking through the multiples of three, six, and four, multiples of six would be six, 12, 18, 24, et cetera. Uh, multiples of four would be four, eight, 12, et cetera. Multiples of three would be three, six, nine, 12, et cetera. And notice they all have a common multiple of 12. So what I can do is I can rewrite the 2 thirds as something over 12, 1 6 as something over 12, and the 3 fourths as something over 12. So now to do that, we do 3 times 4 on the bottom. 2 times 4 gives us 8 on the top. For the 1 6, 6 times 2 is 12 on the bottom. 1 times 2 is 2 on the top. 
third fraction, 4 times 3 is 12 on the bottom, 3 times 3 is 9 on the top. So what we have is 5 and 8 twelfths. We have 8 and 2 twelfths instead of 1 6. And then 6 and 3 fourths is the same thing as 6 and 9 over 12. All right, now from here, it doesn't matter how we add or subtract. So if you want, you can add the first two numbers together first. We can add these together first and then subtract. Or we can subtract you know, the last two numbers and then add the 5 and 8 twelfths at the end. It really doesn't matter how you do it. Uh, so just do whatever is easiest for you. All right, so if we do the first two first, I think this would probably be easier. We have 5 plus 8, which gives us 13. And then the fraction, we have 8 twelfths plus 2 twelfths, which gives us 10 twelfths. Now don't simplify the 10 twelfths yet because we still need to combine that with the 6 and 9 twelfths over here. So now we can subtract 13 minus 6 to get 7. And then 10 twelfths minus 9 twelfths gives us 1 twelfth. So our final answer is 7 and 1 over 12. So in this lesson we reviewed some different um, parts of fractions. We learned how to reviewed how to estimate, we reviewed how to compare, and we reviewed how to add or subtract. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.